<laughs> Delicious. Magnifica. Ah, uh, yeah, it's another beautiful day here in Southwest Florida. It's so nice to see you. Thank you so much for stopping by and welcome to this episode of Barlow Barbecue. I'm real excited about today's video because I love sandwiches and today we're gonna make an Italian pulled pork sandwich. Now this recipe is inspired by the traditional South Philly slow roasted Italian pork sandwich. We've got a small pork butt that we're gonna slather in Italian herbs and seasoning. We're gonna throw that on the pit barrel and let it smoke for a couple hours. Then we're gonna take it off, put that in a Dutch oven along with a lot of other goodies like some wine, onions, and then we're gonna put the Dutch oven back in the pit barrel and let that continue to cook until the pork is fall apart tender. And we're gonna throw that on some poppy seed rolls with some sauteed spinach and some provolone cheese. So stick around y'all, let's get this cook started. Alrighty folks, here's all of our ingredients for our fresh Italian herb rub. And we're gonna make this all in the food processor. You could make it with dry, but fresh is always better. So the first thing we're gonna start off is a good amount of fresh parsley. Now I know it should be Italian parsley, but with the shortages of Publix these days, you just gotta take what you can get. So we're just gonna throw this in our food processor. And in the meanwhile I'm doing that, I'm gonna collect some fresh sage. Here they are. And some fresh rosemary. Throw it all in there. We're adding some fresh thyme leaves. If there's a couple stems in there, just don't look at them, cause they're going in. This is some fennel, some dried fennel that I toasted up in a frying pan just for like five minutes, just until it released a little bit of some delicious flavor. We're gonna put that in there too. And a lot of garlic. We have about six cloves here. Now, if you don't like garlic, use less, or maybe make something different. In it goes. We're gonna put the lid on. All right, we're gonna do this nice and easy. We're not gonna chop up any garlic today because we're gonna let the food processor do it for us. I just like to give it a couple little pulses. First. Maybe remember to put the lid on, but you'll be smarter than me. Give it a couple pulses. Hopefully nothing will shoot out the top. We'll get it incorporated and then we're gonna let her rip. We're gonna add just a little more olive oil to this and give it another run. Alright, that looks pretty good to me. Pasty to me. It smells great already. Get this thing off of here and put this all in this bowl. Then we add some salt, some pepper, and a whole lot of crushed red pepper. Stir it up real good. And we're ready to smother that pork in this. Okay, Martha, thanks so much for putting together our Italian herb and seasoning blend right here. And here is our pork butt that we're using today. It's only four pounds, so it won't take too long to cook. All right, so we're just gonna take this mix that Martha put together and I'm just gonna coat this pork butt all over. I'm gonna use my bare hands. They're washed and clean. And we're just gonna rub this in all over the pork. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I've got it coated on all sides with our Italian seasoning. All right, so I'm gonna go wash my hands and then I'm gonna go get my pit barrel fired up and I'll see you at the pit barrel when it's time to get this pork butt on. Well, our resident gator must have known we were barbecuing today because she just came out of the water to start sunning herself. She should be right about back there. Maybe five and a half feet, six feet long. Well, we better get back to this cook. We don't want to disappoint our gator. All right, I got the pit barrel fired up. Now we can get our pork butt on, okay? So let me go ahead and get this lid off here. Oh yeah, good old pit barrel. It's been a long time since we've used this on a video. Got some tongs here so I don't have to get my hands all messed up. Here we go. And we'll just put that right, oop, right in the center there. So we're gonna let this pork butt go for two hours 
in the pit barrel and we're just doing that so that pork can get a little smoke flavor. And then we're gonna put it in a Dutch oven along with some other ingredients. We'll get the Dutch oven back in the pit barrel and then we'll let that cook until the pork is nice and tender. So I'll see you back here in about two hours when it's time to put that pork in the Dutch oven. Okay, it's been about one hour and we are smoking away. That pit barrel is doing great and the pork is smelling awesome out here. Now, I've got a bunch of these peppers right here and these are actually called long hots and these are pretty traditional for the uh, Philly style Italian pork sandwiches. So what we're gonna do with these, we're actually just gonna throw these right on the, the pit barrel with the pork. Ooh, that is looking good. Just gonna throw them right in here and we're just gonna let these smoke roast a little while. There we go. Just gonna throw all these right on here. Last but not least, there we go. So we'll get this lid back on and this pork should be ready to transfer to the Dutch oven in another hour. We'll see you then. Well, all right, it's been two hours now and it's time to get this pork butt out of the pit barrel and in to the Dutch oven, which I've got right here, along with a fresh beer. Cheers, y'all. It is such a beautiful day here in Southwest Florida, about 70 degrees. We got lots of sunshine. Oh boy, it is just a perfect day for some barbecue. Tell you what, let's take a look at our pork. See how it's doing. Oh, beautiful. And we got our log pots in there too, our peppers. Those are looking great. Those are ready to come off the grill. And you know, just because I'm curious, I have a little probe thermometer here. I'm gonna check out the temp on this pork butt. Feeling pretty good in there. All right, that's showing 148, so about 150 on here. Pretty good for two hours in. So like I said, these peppers are all done. Looking real good. So I'm gonna take all of these off and I'm gonna put them right over here on this cutting board. Okay. All right, so we got our Dutch oven all ready to go here, and we've got a few other ingredients that we're gonna add in there as well. Martha, what are those? Well, the first thing we're gonna start off with is just some yellow onions. We're gonna put those thinly sliced at the bottom of our Dutch oven. And we're gonna put our roast right on top of that. Okay, and we got a couple cups of beef broth we're gonna throw in there. And we're gonna add about a cup of wine. And I like to do a cup for our roast. And a cup for our chef. That's me. Cheers. Now we're using some grocery store peanut noir. Delicious. We're gonna throw in a little more rosemary, more garlic, and a couple bay leaves. Now, uh, normally we would just take our lid and just put it right on top, but this pork butt is still just a little bit too big for this uh, 10 inch lodge. A little too high. Yep, a little, a little too high for us to see, get the lid on there. So we're gonna improvise and we've got a little bit of tin foil here. All right, let's get the sucker back in there because I'm hungry. Mm. All right, so we've done a Dutch oven in the pit barrel a couple times before in our videos, but in case you've never tried it, here's how you do it. You're just gonna set up one rebar and set that kind of crosswise. There you go. And Martha's gonna bring over the Dutch oven. Try not to drop it in the fire. we're gonna just thread it right through the handle there. And then oh. put this right through there. Except for nothing okay, really we'll, we'll adjust it. There you go, and now we just let your, pit bar, your uh, Dutch oven just hang right off that rebar right there and you're good to go. And let's get the lid back on. And we're gonna let this go in the Dutch oven until that pork butt is nice and tender. But we'll come back here in about an hour. We'll check on it, baste it if we need to. Just we just wanna make sure everything's doing what it should do, okay? So we'll see you back here 
real soon. All right, this pork has been in the Dutch oven now for a total of one hour. So I wanna go ahead and uh, check it out. I'm gonna do a little tenderness check, see how it's feeling. I tell you what, the neighbors are jealous today. This smells great. Oh, it's smelling great out here. All right, let's see if I can okay. skin this off without upsetting the whole oh, thing. Oh yeah, okay. Ooh, it's looking good in there. Ooh. I know it's probably hard to tell on the camera with all the shadows in there, but this is looking really good. Ooh, it's feeling really nice. Let's see what the temperature check is right now. 181. And while we're at it, let's give it a little baste. We got still have a lot of liquid down in here. Kind of tricky to do when you're hanging your Dutch oven off the rebar there. Don't capsize the boat. Yeah, you don't want to capsize anything. Man overboard. That would be the end of this video. The end. Well, Martha's got that. We're going to baste it a little bit more. We'll cover this back up with our foil. Get the lid on. Give this another hour. And I think about another hour. It should be pretty close. It should be about done. All right. You got it. There you go. All right. We got our foil back on there. We'll get the lid back on. And like I said, we'll do another hour on this and we should be good to go. So, we'll see you in one hour. Okay, it's been one hour and total cooking time up until this point that the pork has been in the Dutch oven, two hours. Total cooking time overall, overall I think has been four hours. Okay, so now we're gonna check it, check it out, see how it's doing. Martha's here to assist. We're gonna take off this foil. Ta -da! Mm. All right, I got my probe thermometer here. We're gonna check for tenderness and temperature. Temperature. Oh, well, that's feeling really good. Not getting any resistance going in. And let's see what our temp is at. One ninety-eight. Another reading here, 198, perfect. All right, the temperature is checked out and the tenderness is checked out. So that means we're done with this pork being on the pit barrel. I'm gonna go ahead and take this Dutch oven off of here and I'm gonna take our uh, pork butt out and let that rest for about 30 minutes. And then we'll come back and shred it up, mix it, mix it in with all the other goodness that we got going on in there. And uh, we'll make some awesome sandwiches. Martha's got a hold of the Dutch oven there. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. Let's move it right over here. Yeah. All right, so we got the Dutch oven safely removed from the pit barrel. And now what I'm gonna do, as carefully as I can, I'm gonna try to transfer this pork butt over here into this bowl. Awesome. We're gonna kind of pick out any sort of bay leaves or right, stems that, one. that we don't want to eat. Right. Yep. There's a couple bay leaves in there. Always count how many bay leaves you put in so you can get that many out. We're gonna take this inside, run it through the blender until it's smooth, bring it back outside, and that's gonna be our sauce for our sandwiches. Ooh, yeah. And we're gonna let this pork rest for about 30 minutes. So we'll be uh, we'll be right back. Well, all right, this pork butt has been resting now for 30 minutes and it's time to shred it up. Oh yeah. Shredding it apart like butter, y'all. Beautiful. All right, this pork has shredded up beautifully. It's looking really good. And right here, we've got the juices. We just took that inside, kind of strained it out a little bit and uh, nothing too fancy. We just wanted to get like the big, you know, nasty stuff out of there, the bay leaves and the big chunks of rosemary. But we're gonna pour that right in there. And look at this. Now we're just gonna mix up all this beautiful shredded pork. 
All right, we've got this thoroughly mixed up here. We're gonna put this right back into the Dutch oven. All right, now it's time to make some sandwiches, y'all. Since it is an Italian recipe, we're gonna pour ourselves a little wine. Finishing the bottle. Ooh. All right, for these sandwiches, we have the following. We have some poppy seed hoagie rolls right here, fresh baked at Publix. We got some provolone cheese. We're just gonna add a, a few slices on the bottom. And while Martha's doing that, we've got some spinach that we sauteed up and some oil and lots of garlic. Now the traditional South Philly pork sandwich recipe calls for broccoli rabe, but Martha and I really aren't too big of fans of that. So to substitute that, here's some spinach that we sauteed up in some olive oil and lots of garlic. All right, we got the provolone cheese right here. We're ready to go. Now here's our pork that's been um, well integrated with all the beautiful juices that incorporated throughout the cook. And we're gonna lay that right there on that provolone cheese. Now we need to leave, leave a little bit of room for our spinach. Don't you worry. Oh yeah. And then right here, we've got those uh, roasted long hots, mm -hmm. smoked mm -hmm. roasted long hots. And then finally, we've got some of this sauteed spinach. Boy, that is gonna be a real mouthful. <laughs> we'll try these in just a moment. I'll tell you what. Again, it's so nice to share these cooks with you guys. We truly appreciate having you here. Mm -hmm. So from our yard to your yard, thanks so much and cheers to you. Cheers, y'all. And family and friends and whatever you're celebrating today. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah. I am real excited about these sandwiches and we actually uh, just put them back on the pit barrel to warm back up because you know a little behind the scenes YouTube info when you're making YouTube videos inevitably by the time you do the taste test it's going to be cold because you got to take photos you got to take your thumbnail so that was not doing doing this sandwich nope. any justice I'm going to go get the sandwiches off the pit barrel I'll be right back do you need a landing pad for oh, them I've got one right in front of you here Comes one. Here's number two. All right, I'll put that right here. All right, here These we go. These look great. These look awesome. Uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, I've never tried a long hot pepper, so this is going to be the first time that I tried one of those. First time trying one of these Italian pork sandwiches. Here we go, y'all. Mmm. 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 Well, well, well. It's not what I thought it would be, but it's okay. absolutely delicious. <sighs> Dripping over here. Mm, right? What it tastes buttery almost. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So buttery. I don't know what I was expecting. Mm. Maybe that it would taste, you know, mm. like Italian seasoning, mm. but everything mm. comes together oh, wow. so lovely. It's got a buttery flavor. That spinach in there, the cheese. Oh yeah. The long hot. Oh my goodness gracious, y'all. Yeah. <sighs> it is perfection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the, let's, I mean, I'll try to break it down a little bit. The pork mm. is perfectly tender, so we know that's going on. But what I really like about this is I'm used to doing, you know, barbecue <sighs> pulled pork, more traditional style with the, you know, maybe a little bit of vinegar sauce, you know, and some coleslaw traditional barbecue sandwich but what I really like about this pulled pork is it's a totally different flavor profile you get all of that really good Italian seasoning really savory Italian seasoning mm. delicious magnifica <laughs> all right Martha final thoughts on this Italian <laughs> pork sandwich I think I love it in every way it was super fun. There's mm -hmm. lots of opportunity to put your own flair of it. Yeah, your own twist on it. Yep. Do you think it's important? It's so deliciously juicy, but it's good to put a layer of cheese in the bottom to protect your bun so okay. it all stays together, yep. which I really liked. And uh, I love the spinach on there. I love the, I just loved it. I love the long hot. Mm -hmm. and I love the wine. Final thoughts for me. What do you think? This is one of the best things that we've made on video. I think in so a while. too. Like hands down, this right here. Yeah. 
I mean, with it's the, the Pope with like best of the year in my opinion. Like this is probably the best of 2021 right here this recipe so we're gonna provide everything right down below in the description box so you can make this at home for yourselves and we both highly recommend it would try be great it for christmas day Ooh, it's gonna be great Ooh, for any day any day <laughs> cheers to that we hope you try it out and we thank you so much for hanging out with us we love you and until next time spoke them if you got them that's right bye bye <laughs>